Let's take a look at second degree type 1. In all of our heart block instances, we're going to be using an analogy of road blocks and speed bumps. So let's start with second degree type 1. In second degree type 1, I want you to imagine that the SA node traveling through to the AV node is a road, uh, and that, of course, that road travels through to the ventricles, as we know, through the AV node. And that's somewhere between the SA node and through the AV node that there's some type of block occurring, which in this case we're going to talk about a second degree type 1. So let's say that in a second degree type 1, the first thing that occurs is a normal impulse. The SA node fires and it goes without a hitch down to the ventricles. After that, a small amount of electrical resistance builds up within that pathway. And that causes the next impulse to be slowed down a little bit, kind of like a speed bump. And we know that the distance on the EKG between the SA node and the ventricles and that uh, firing sequence is the PR interval. So we're going to see a very minor increase in PR interval in our second uh, beat after our initial beat in second degree type 1. Now, more electrical resistance has built again. So when our third beat comes, it's going to be a bigger speed bump or even a longer PR interval. And once again, for the one after that, in this case, a 3 to 1 conduction, uh, it's going to be a little longer. Now, after that, the entire road is going to become blocked. So the next beat will be completely blocked and we'll see no QRS whatsoever. After this, the, the electrical activity or, or resistance that's built has discharged and things set back to normal so that we see a normal PR interval and a normal appearing QRS afterwards. So how might we see this if we were to look on the EKG? Uh, we should see, as I mentioned, a normal PR interval and then followed by a lengthening PR interval as that resistance builds up, a little more lengthening of the PR interval as the resistance builds further, and then eventually to the point where it blocks the impulse, we see a P wave but no QRS, and then a reset of the same sequence. It's important to remember that secondary type 1s can have 2 to 1, 3 to 1 variable conductions, but they always have an increasing PR interval, and that's the key in determining this. So if we look at this, on our actual strip, we see that the rate is usually less than 60 because of the dropped beats uh, that occur. Um, it's difficult to calculate an R to R here, so we're going to use our six second strip and count the QRSs. In this case, we'd say the rate was about 50. Uh, regularity, it depends. It can be regularly irregular if it's a standard conduction, or it can be irregularly irregular. In the case of P waves, they should be present, um, and when there's a PR interval, we expect to see it increasing throughout the block. Uh, and then, of course, we drop and we have no PR interval where there's no QRS. QRS is, uh, as long as there's no underlying aberrant uh, bundle branch block, etc., will be narrow in this case, uh, which is important in differentiating, for example, third degree heart block where they will be wide and aberrant. So let's take a look now at second degree type 2. How is that different from type 1? In a type 1, we said that the roadway slowly built up resistance and made these speed bumps, per se. In this case, and usually secondary type 2 really represents a, a worse underlying pathology, and in this case, part of the road has just been taken out, probably by a focal MI or something like that. So half of the road, one lane of the road is blocked, but the other lane is okay. And so what's going to happen here is that either it's going to go down the easy path, and it's going to be a normal PR interval and a normal QRS, or if it goes down the blocked path, you're going to get no QRS for that P wave. So it means that when I do have a PR interval, it should be normal, and otherwise I won't have a PR interval because I will have dropped my QRS. So how does that look on the EKG? It should look like this. When we have a PR interval, it's a normal PR interval, and otherwise we just don't have one. And again, this can be a variable conduction or a standard conduction, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, etc. So if we look again uh, at our actual EKG, in this case, the rate's uh, usually bradycardic. In this case, we would have approximately a 40 uh, beat a minute heart rate. Uh, the regularity, it may be regular like this. This is a, a two to one, two drops for one conduction, uh, but it may be irregular also. 
Uh, P waves are always present, and the PR interval when it's there is always exactly the same. So when you have a narrow complex heart block with the PR intervals the same, it's a type 2. Most likely, if the PR intervals are getting bigger, 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 that's again where we're looking for more of a type 1. That's the differentiation we're looking for. QRS, again, most likely will be narrow unless there's an underlying bundle branch block. And again, it's the wide aberrancy of a third degree heart block that usually keys us off to that. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, simple sample of help for EKG. Please visit helpforekg.com uh, anytime you wish. Uh, we have a full arrhythmia and a full 12 lead uh, instruction. It includes uh, over four hours of uh, voiced over instruction. Also has two quizzes uh, and it's only $20 for a year's access for each of our presentations.